your weakness, it's your illusion of strength. That's what God has done for us. And we've got to overcome this slave mentality by realizing we are sons of God. We've got to overcome this pauper mentality, this poverty spirit that gets on people by realizing we are heirs with Christ. That means that whatever he has, we have. Not because we are so great, but because we are in Christ. pain you're in, you know that difficulty you're having with other people, God wants to bring you to the end of you. It's God's way of rescuing us from ourselves. gotta have a standing attitude that, that but if not kind of faith the kind of faith that trusts God no matter the outcome the type of faith that, that takes a stand and refuses to bow to pressure and when you take a stand listen here's what you're saying no matter what comes against me I'm not moving no matter what I see or I hear I'm not moving no matter how I feel I'm not moving no matter how difficult this battle gets I'm not moving no matter how bad I want to quit I'm not moving no matter how long it takes. That's the big one. I'm not moving no matter what. I'm not moving until God says move. People can't move me. Circumstances can't move me. Satan can't move me. Only God can move me. And until God moves me, I'm still standing. Sometimes your victory comes simply by refusing to give up and continuing to stand. Listen, the devil might have stole your job, but guess what? You're still standing. He might try to ruin our reputation, but we're still standing. The devil tried to divide my family, but I'm still standing. The devil tries to steal my health, but guess what? I'm still standing. The devil tries to turn people against me, but I'm still stand standing. The devil hit me with his best shot, but I'm still standing. I've even fallen down at times, but the righteous man falls seven times and gets back up and continues to stand. So I'm standing in faith. I'm standing in grace. I'm standing on the promises. I'm standing on the word of God, on Christ the Son. Solid rock I stand, all other ground is sinking sand, and having done all I choose to stand in Jesus' name. Good morning, Grace! Happy anniversary! Come joyful, come praising. Jesus is born in Bethlehem.
to worship the Lord this morning? You ready to give him thanks and praise and glory and honor and worship because he alone is worthy of it? Are you ready this morning? Hey, we want to welcome you to our 20th anniversary service. We are so excited to gather together today. Thank you for being here. Thank you to those who are watching online. But we're here to glorify God and to honor him and to thank him for what he's done in us and for us and through us these last 20 years. We're going to celebrate our past and what God's doing in the present and what he will do in the future. Amen. 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 We're going to be led in worship by Dwayne and Michelle Davidson and the GFC praise team. I'm Pastor Joe, and with your on-time blessing and call to worship, here's Pastor Deb. Well, this on-time blessing this morning, it actually kind of portrays our vision here at Grace Fellowship. And it's out of Ephesians 5, and it's verse... Uh, 12 says this be filled with the spirit speak to one another with psalms hymns and spiritual songs sing and make music in your heart to the Lord always giving thanks to God the Father for everything in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ and that is our heart is to be filled with the Spirit of God to worship him with psalms with our voice with the lifting of our hands with all that is within us so this morning we encourage you to press into God set put everything else aside and let's just set our hearts on him father in the name of Jesus we come to you today giving you glory and honor and praise. You are a good God, and we worship you today in spirit and in truth because you alone are worthy, and we thank you in Jesus' mighty name. Can you say amen? amen. All right, so come on, church. Let's worship. Morning when the sun is rising, yep. another day to tell of all your kindness. When I think of your goodness, oh, I sing for joy and I speak the name. Hey. Even when the night is falling, troubles rise and I can't hear you call. To worry, I won't be afraid. I speak the name. Yeah. Speak the name, speak the name that has power. Speak the name, speak the name above all others. My Savior, Redeemer, my hope. Speak 
beside me The winter storms they wait for spring In every season from where I'm standing I see the evidence of your goodness all over my life all over my All over my life, all over my life. And remember when I'm weak. Oh, it may come to fear relief. You lead my heart.
the substance of things hoped for and the evidence and the evidence of things not seen 20 years ago you may not have seen what you see today but God's faithfulness this is the evidence of God's faithfulness isn't he good isn't he good let's sing it one more time I see the evidence I see the evidence of your goodness all over my all over my life, yeah. I see your promises. I see your promises in the All over my life. All over my life. I say, I am the evidence. I am the evidence of your goodness. All over my life. All over my life. I see your promises, I see your promises in fulfillment all over my life, all over my life. Come on, give them praise. God from whom all blessings flow, praise Him all creatures here below, praise Him above the heavenly host, praise Father, Son, and Holy sing hallelujah 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 praise god from Just here below. 
that's in my favor oh, there's a shifting oh, 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 in my direction oh, there's a breaking in my favor as I Hallelujah. Thank you, sir. You know, you may, may be wondering, what's this talking about? There's a breaking in my direction. But I tell you, the key to that passage right there is the phrase, as I praise. As I praise. We've been teaching the last few weeks on moving forward in praise and moving deeper in worship. And we've been talking about how God is looking for people that praise. And how we even praise him in advance of seeing victory. We praise him in advance of provision. We praise him in advance, knowing what he will do. And I love what Jesus said in John. And I had that, and I just uh, closed my Bible up accidentally. But I will find it again, because I know the Holy Scriptures, right? <laughs> I got it memorized anyway. But here it is from John 4, verse 23. Here's what Jesus said. The hour is coming. And now is. Now, if it was now is back then, I mean, it really is now is now. When true worship, true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and truth. Listen, for the Father is seeking such to worship him. People always ask me, are you a seeker-friendly church? And I say, yes. And there's one seeker I'm concerned about. It's the Lord God Almighty. Because as we worship him in spirit and truth, the Bible says his eyes are running to and fro across the world to show himself strong on those whose hearts are fully set on him. And as we enter his gates with thanksgiving, as we enter his courts with praise, as we come into his presence, God begins to change things. That's what our vision is about as a, as a church, touching heaven, changing earth. It's moments like this when we're in the presence of God together that God changes us. And then as we're changed, we go out and change the world. Lord, I thank you. I thank you, Lord, for your presence. I thank you, Lord, for your people. I thank you, Lord, for a people whose mouths and hearts are full of praise. 
And I thank you, O oh God, that you inhabit the praises of your people. Lord, when, we're, when two or three are gathered in your name, there you are. And when we gather in your name and we begin to praise, you, praise who you are and praise you, Lord, there you are in our midst. Lord, we thank you for being here today. We thank you for your faithfulness over the years. We thank you for everything you've done and everything you are doing and everything you will do. And we give you all the glory. Lord, everything today is giving you glory for what you've done. And we thank you for it in Jesus' name. Go ahead, give him some praise. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. You may be seated. We're going to have some more worship on and off kind of through this service. It's going to be a little bit different today, so, uh, so you can go with the flow, right? Three of y'all can go with the flow. You can go with the flow, right? All right. Uh, we're ex so excited today that uh, we have some members of our city council here from the city of Grand Prairie. Uh, we have been blessed to be a part of this city um, and in churches in this city, we were at Shady Grove Church on the north side of the city where Pastor Olin was a pastor uh, for 13 years. And now we're on the south side, and we've been here 20 years. Uh, started in the Krause's house, then at the YMCA, and now here in this building. And, and we're so grateful to have a council member, Georgia Jackson Clemson, uh, from District 1. Uh, she's been here before with um, her mom, Ruthie Jackson, and uh, at a National Day of Prayer. And Council Member Kurt Johnson from District 6. We're so blessed to have them here. I, I went online to look at, so just to introduce y'all, and you guys had a, like a whole page of fine print of all your accomplishments and, I, and all your involvement, and I figured if I started that, we'd be here all day. So I just want you to make welcome Councilwoman Clemson and Councilman Johnson. Thank you, Lord, for being here. Thank you, Pastor Joe. Pastor Deb and Pastor Ann for inviting us. And happy, happy, happy anniversary to you all. This is a wonderful day that the Lord has made. And we're rejoicing with you. And we're glad in it. I just want to say, as we were standing there singing, I could see the evidence of God's faithfulness all over this church. And that it was a beautiful thing. First of all, I'd like to introduce this handsome gentleman standing next to me. This is Kurt Johnson. He is your District 6 City Council representative. And he has a few words for you before the proclamation. Good morning. Thank you guys for inviting me today to celebrate your 20th year anniversary. Uh, I've been in Grand Prairie since 1999. And just like Pastor Joe said, I have a we have a background that's so long, so I don't want to bore you with it, but I am a retired military officer, and I'm proud of that, and I enjoy it, serving my country. And most importantly now, I'm, on a, I'm here to serve you in District 6. So I know this church is filled with the Holy Spirit. I am a member of Oak Cliff Bible Fellowship with Pastor uh, Tony Evans. Yeah, got me, Tony Evans. I've been, a, I've been going there since the late 80s. I've been a member. And throughout my military service, he carried me through with all his sermons. I would get sent out to, out to see to me and different things like that. My wife was saying, but she's not able to be here today. She's actually getting my grandkids ready so we can go to church later. Uh, I was blessed two weeks ago with my fourth grandchild. So I am so happy to have that. So thank you for having me here today. And I pray that this church continues to grow with the Holy Spirit within it. Thank you. Thank you so much. Also, I just want to say that Ann and I, um, one of the reasons I'm here is because of a relationship with Ann. And not only do we have history here in Grand Prairie, but our mothers had history. Her mother worked at the newspaper in Grand Prairie, when, you know, back in the old days when you had a, a, a newspaper in Grand Prairie. And of course, my mother was a, a busy little lady around town, so they had a great relationship keeping up with what was happening in Grand Prairie. So thank you again for having us today. And thank you for your contributions to our city with feeding the homeless, with being at the National Day of Prayer. The, your pastors are involved, and that is a blessing. Some, some choose to be more focused inward, but I love how your church is focused outward into the community. Yes. I will read this. I'll try to do speed reading. It's not that long, but it has beautiful history in it. 
And I might want to put on my glasses just in case. Whereas pastors Joe and Deborah Oakley began Grace Fellowship Church with four other people as a Bible study in a home in 2001 in Grand Prairie, Texas. And whereas Grace Fellowship Church held its first church service in December 2001. And whereas Grace Fellowship Church has experienced consistent growth in membership, ministry, and outreach reach from their beginning in a home to the years they met at the South Grand Prairie YMCA to their current location on Polo Road. And whereas Grace Fellowship Church's vision to glorify God by touching heaven and changing earth as a spirit-filled, multi-ethnic, multi-generational congregation has benefited Grand Prairie and the DFW Metroplex. And whereas Grace Fellowship Church's vision for local and international missions has resulted in local ministries, including helping those in need and feeding the homeless, and has also resulted in sending missions teams to 35 nations of the world. And whereas Grace Fellowship Church is celebrating their 20th anniversary as they move forward in faith, and now our wonderful mayor, Ron J Jensen, who is not able to be here today, but sends his greetings, has signed this wonderful proclamation proclaiming December 5th as Grace Fellowship Church Day in the city of Grand Prairie. I would say that's a hallelujah. And uh, that is from all the citizens of Grand Prairie, from the city council, from the mayor, of course. And it's signed and sealed. And pastor, we'd like to deliver it. Thank you. This is for you. Thank you so much. That is so awesome. Thank you guys for being here. It's a blessing. Could I get Dan, my husband, to take a picture? Sure. Take a picture, Dan. <laughs> Thank you. I so, I so appreciate you being here. I, I really do. I really do. I appreciate you so much. And we're so glad to have our friends Paul and Sandy Ward with us today. And Pastor Dad, you want to come up here with me? Am I doing the right thing? Okay, I just want to make sure. I want to make sure. Uh, we're so glad. Yes, we're so glad. P Pastor Paul and Sandy, we've known them for many years. Uh, they pastored in Georgia. They pastored in England. They pastor now here in Dallas, Mortal Life Community Church. We had the great pleasure uh, of having them as part of our church for several years and ministered here and led here. Pastor Paul was one of our elders. They oversee a network of churches um, called the North Star, and they've just been great friends of ours. Anything you want to say? Well, I just want to say how grateful I am for the relationship that we have had with you and for the influence that both of you have had in our lives. It's been such a joy to walk alongside of you and to serve God together with you. Thank you for being so faithful and loyal. We love you guys. We really do. Well, come on up, Pastor Paul and Pastor Sandy Ward, to the greatest preachers, ministers, friends, children of God that you'll ever meet. Thank you, Pastor John. Okay, this is my husband, Pastor Paul Ward, and like they said, we are so honored to be a part of honoring this church and especially your pastors today. But there's someone we want to mention first that are sitting on the front row with us, Jerry and Trudy Krauss. Would you stand, please, for a moment and give them a hand? <clears throat> Well deserved, very well deserved. You may be seated. Uh, Jerry, Jerry was the, for 5.5 years, he was at Chase Bank before he retired, and he retired as the senior vice president of Chase Bank. Trudy and Jerry met the Oakleys at Westchester Community Church, the first church that they started, and it was meeting in the exact building that GFC occupies today. 
Pastor, this church, Pastor Joe was being nudged by the Holy Spirit to start another church about the same time that Jerry and Trudy had had an encounter with God and the Holy Spirit as they were driving home from work. So uh, pa uh, Jerry and Trudy and Pastor Joe at the same time were hearing the Holy Spirit say, start the church start a church so shortly after that the holy spirit provided the direction and they began to start a church and it started in two weeks at the krause's home now see there are people you know the bible says to everything there's a season and a time for every purpose under heaven raise your hand if it's been a while since you've been at grace but you're back home today you came home today for the 20th celebration we're so glad to have you back but you know there are people who come into your life and stay and they stand beside you through the good times and the bad times and it is appropriate and it is proper today that we honor the Krauses. They have been the greatest friends these two people have ever had, and I've never heard an unkind word about either one of you from anybody in this church. You deserve the honor. Now, uh, they went to lunch. This is interesting. They went to lunch the next Sunday with the Oakleys at On the Border, and they were discussing the church that they were starting, and Pastor Joe mentioned that he wanted to start a church, and Jerry said, in two weeks, we'll start it in my home. And after Trudy and Deb stopped choking on their fajitas and Pastor Joe was through gasping for air, Grace Fellowship Church was born right there. And so now the Krauses and the Oakleys refer to it as the fajita revelation. So because you opened your home and because you were willing to stand behind these two great pastors all the way through this time, we honor you today. And we have, uh, don't we have something that we wanted to present? I believe there's a plaque. Someone has a plaque for Jerry and Trudy and Pastor Paul's going to read it. Would you, it's beautiful. Very, very beautiful. Um, okay, I had to put it behind my thing so I could actually see it. Uh, presented to Jerry and Trudy Krause on the Grace Fellowship Church 20th anniversary in celebration of 20 years of grace from your church family, December 5th. Pastor Deb's going to bring it to you. We honor you today. We honor you today. You know, the Bible says where there's no honor, there'll be no mighty works. And I thank God that we learned a lot about honor when we were here at this church from Pastor Joe and Pastor Deb. And my husband went on after he heard Pastor Joe's message and wrote a book called The Power of Honor. There's honor in the house today. Amen. There's so much to honor about what's happened in this ministry. Pastor Paul. Okay. You know, in 20 years... Pastor Joe and Deb have come to this pulpit or one like it at Tr Trudy and Jerry's house <laughs> to deliver the word of God to this congregation approximately 1,000 times. Think about that. Although messages are similar over the years, every single message preached has been thought out researched, edited, and prayed over to bring you and everyone over the past 20 years a fresh yeah. word from God. In 20 years, Pastors Joe and Deb have rejoiced with you and your families over countless weddings and have lamented and cried with you over the death of your lost loved ones. They would not let you see the times of their grief, their hurts, and yes, their loss. Because the following Sunday or the following Wednesday, they were expected by God and by you to put their grief aside and bring yet another fresh word of God. Always. Hoping, always hoping that a moment of their message would register in your heart and maybe bring a small change to your lives toward the God that we serve. This alone 
is the reason that there would be times that Joe and Deb Oakley would delay receiving their salaries and delay paying their bills. There was and is a greater obligation. The obligation of keeping these doors open so that you and the hundreds if not thousands of people who have walked through those double doors in the past 20 years would experience a moment. A moment that might compel us to this area of the altar to seek God for some small or large needed change in our lives. In 2007, our daughter Terry excitedly convinced us to come to this location, visit this church, and meet your pastors. After a lunch at Olive Garden on Cockrell Hill Road, the four of us knew from that point we would be lifelong friends. And even more importantly, for several years, Sandy and I sat in the very chairs that you sit today. And we too have listened and responded to these moments. Joe and Deb Oakley were our pastors and remain our dearest friends. It is not difficult to stand here and to honor and to elevate two people Sandy and I love so dearly. We love you, Joe. We love you, Deb. Your fingerprints are all over each of our lives. Each. Amen. Each and every person that has come to Grace Fellowship, no matter where we are in this world, carry your influence and carry these moments. May the next 10... May the next 20 years in this book called Grace Fellowship be filled with chapters that have reflected God's favor, God's wisdom, and God's prosperity upon you, upon your family, upon your generations, and upon your wonderful congregation. We love you and honor you today. Amen. Amen. Real quickly, I just want to say something about the two of them as well. See, we consider them to be some of our closest friends and confidants, but we also consider them to be a part of our pastoral covering. They have permission to speak into our lives and to speak into our ministries in any way that they see fit. Today, we celebrate Pastor Joe's wisdom, his patience, his kindness, his fortitude, and his generosity. He is slow to anger, and he is quick to forgive and forget the faults of other people. When I think of Pastor Deb, I think of her strength of character, her natural beauty, as well as grace. I think she is a, an extremely excellent minister of the gospel of Jesus Christ. But more than anything, if I had to describe Pastor Deb in one word, it would be innocent. You know how much God values children because of the innocence that, are, that is in their lives? Deborah Oakley has got more innocence in her heart than any other woman that I've ever been close to. She has a love for God, and she loves God's people like no one else I've ever known. I value her advice, and I treasure every time that we're together. Pastor Deb and I have tra to, traveled to Rome, Venice, Greece, Alaska, Johannesburg, South Africa, Kenya, Harare, Zimbabwe, and Victoria Falls ministering together, praying, planning, proofing each other's books, laughing, and quite often crying together. There are people who make our days, and then there are people who change our lives, and always for the better. We love you, and we appreciate you, and there's a plaque. Here's a plaque that's been given as well for the two of you. Pastors Joe and Deb. This is presented to you on the Grace Fellowship Church 20th anniversary in celebration of 20 years of grace from your church family, December 5th, 2021. Amen. God bless you. And we have a card as well. I'd like to encourage you. You're going to be seeing up on the screen today the different ways in which you can give. But I want you to understand that when you give to the 20th anniversary 
for the celebration of Grace Fellowship Church. You're giving to Pastor Joe and Deb. Hopefully, we brought an offering. The Bible says your gift will make room for you. And you will stand before kings and not, the Bible says, mean men. But if you look up that definition, it actually means idiots. That's the definition of it in the Strong's Concordance. You'll stand before kings and not idiots. And so our, there, is that going to come up here in just a moment to tell you how to give? There's offering buckets that you can put in the back. We brought our gifts today. Give by mail, text, app, or online. But I encourage you, sow seed into this 20-year celebration. We won't pass this way again. There'll be other things and other celebrations, but this is a day of victory. Amen. Thank you, Pastor Joe and Deb. Let's give our pastors a round of applause again. Come on. At this time, I bring back to you Brother Ezel Clark is going to give us a selection. To God be the glory. Show him some love. Good morning, Grace. Happy anniversary, Pastor Joe and Deb and Grace. God bless you. How can I say thanks for the things you've done? for me things so undeserved yet you gave to prove your love for me the voices of a million angels cannot express my gratitude all that I am and ever hope to be, I owe it all to thee. To God be the glory, to God be the glory, to God. For the things you have done with his blood he has saved me with his power he has raised me to God be the glory for the things he has done home oh, just let me live my life and let it be pleasing Lord to thee and should I gain any praise let it go to Calvary Oh, with his blood, he has saved me. With his power, he has raised me. To God be the glory yes, for the things he has done for the things.
Come on. Somebody just make a like you love Jesus Christ in this place. Come on, to God be the glory we receive this. I want to let you know today is a great day for everyone in the building to feel 20 again. <laughs> you can take that home with you, it's free. <laughs> but all of you have who have taken the time to connect with us online and here today, Grace, if it's your first time, we want you to take that moment. Fill out your digital connection card. You can connect with our QR, QR codes and just feel 20 again with us. We want to just be excited for what God has done these past 20 years. And you know what? It's more. Pastor Joe has a sermon that says, but wait, there's more. And we want to believe for that. Come on. So somebody just say there's more. So if it's your first time, we have a gift waiting for you. We want to love on you. We just want to give all our guests, our returning guests, as well as our first time guests, a big hand, clap, praise. We want to do that. And also, before I make some announcement, I want to tell you right now, we're just believing for our church family in the 20 years. There's been so many special members, so many special leaders, so many great people that we've served with and walked with. And on this week, you guys know, we, we used to have Miss Ollie to sit over here, and she would praise. She was like, Miss Ollie was like about 100 years old, still praising, and she ended up being at home, and we lost her on this past week. And we just want to honor their family and give them a hand with so much. But also a young man, I call him young man every single time I would see him, I would walk in church and I would say, how you doing young man? He's like, how you doing young man? I want to tell you, we would always share that moment. And on this past week, uh, we lost brother Jim Smith and it's been heartbreaking. The family is here. He has about three or four generations here. And on behalf of the Grace Fellowship Church, I want to tell you, our heart is heavy with you. But we're rejoicing because we know where he is. We know who he is, what type of man he is. Debbie, I love you. I love the family. And so we want to just pray and take time to just have a moment of silence for those individuals and for those families. So let's take that moment now. To God be the glory. Somebody give God a hand clap of praise in the building. <laughs> so are you excited for what God is going to be doing in our life? I want to let you know right now, here's some two quick announcements I want to give to you. Family life, and that's marriage, that's, that's young people, children, teenagers, and all of that. We're going to be having an open house for parents. You guys are used to going to those with the school system, but we're going to have something. There's going to be a class for parents. There's going to be something for everyone. So you can truly understand how we're going to be sowing into family going into 2022. We want to be intentional to let you know what's going to be going on and how we're going to grow together with families. Amen? And also, I want to tell you, Christmas is here. Merry Christmas. Happy New Year, all those good things. Uh, we want to tell you, please join us for our Christmas Eve service. What day is it on? December 24th, Christmas Eve. And it's also be a service on Sunday. Both of those services will be identical. It will be a one-hour service for you to come and fellowship and have a service with your family. So please come and join us. And now we're going to continue our worship through the giving of our tithe and our offering. <laughs> There's different methods to give on the screen. I want to remind you, if you do want to sow into our Founders Life, you can give to our 20th anniversary here at Grace. You can go. We've been giving to the 20th anniversary towards that, so you can do that and all the other ways to give. Today's scripture comes from 2 Corinthians chapter 8, verse 7. It says, but just as you excel in everything, in faith, in speech, in knowledge, in complete earnestness, and in your love for us, see that you also excel in this grace of giving. So we're going to be praying about tithe and offering, Freedom Church, GFC missions and missionaries, and our family and friends who do not yet know Christ. Let's go to God in prayer. God, we just honor you for who you are, our King, our Lord, our Savior, our provider, our protector. God, we pray to you, Lord, and we just give you all the praise and all the glory for who you are in our lives, God. So we pray over the seeds of tithe and offering, God, and we ask, Lord, that you will rain down blessings of multiplication, Lord, over these, over the giving, Lord. May everyone have a giving heart. Do not give grudgingly, Lord, and we just believe, Lord, that you are going to do great things with those, with those resources that are given. 
God, we pray over Freedom Church, God. We pray over the leadership, God. We ask that you continue to lift them up. We pray over our missions and our missionaries, God. We ask that for continued protection and sustainment as they continue to sow and plow the field in your kingdom. God, we pray for our family and friends who do not yet know you, God. We ask that disciples, I will continue to say this prayer, that disciples will rise up, Lord, that we will go to the streets, we will reach outside the walls and share the gospel to those who do not know you. So we ask right now that we may have victory in that, God, and we claim it in advance. In Jesus' name we pray. Somebody shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. Somebody shout amen. Amen. Give it up for our pastors coming up. Hey, we're so excited. I appreciate you guys for honoring us. I really do. And the Bible says to give honor to whom honor is due. And there are some... A lot of other people we'd love to honor uh, quickly. Uh, first of all, if those who uh, started attending Grace at the Krause's house, if you attended any of the services at the Cherry and Trudy's house, would you just stand up real quick? I know there's a few of y'all here. Come on. Come on. Jason. Yes. Uh, uh, Bob, Krausek, and thanks for being here, Bob. Uh, me and Bob were the original band, and... Uh, Thank you. Um, Mary Burns uh, started our children's ministry in the, in the upstairs of the Krause's house and then in the YMCA, and her and Bill are here also. Thank you so much. Uh, you want to say something about our kids? Yes, I just would like Kristen and Jason real quick to just stand. This, these are our children who went through all of it with us. Ch- pastor's children go through everything their family goes through, their parents go through. Thank you both for being so supportive and for loving us and for being there. Did I see Lisa Creed over here? I can't see you very good. Stand up, Lisa. This, I'm telling you, this woman right here was such an integral part of the beginning of our church. I'm trying and thinking about it. Lisa, we probably wouldn't be here without you too. And uh, I'm so glad you came today. When we talk about six people starting this church, it was us, the Krauses, David and Lisa Creed. And Lisa worked tirelessly for years um, helping us start this church. She was our first worship leader and did everything. Back then, we all did everything. And uh, David's gone on to be with the Lord now. And David was the one who came up with the touching heaven, changing earth uh, motto. And that's an amazing thing. And, and, and I just want to tell you how much we love you, how much we appreciate you, how much of a big part you were of our church. And um, just... Love, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Okay, if you were with us at the YMCA, you need to definitely stand. We, we met in a basketball court, right? We made it work. Come on, Diana. Look at all these amazing people. Wow, thank you so much for being here today. Thank you for the part that you played, for using your gifts, for serving God. We're all here because of all of you. Yes, and thanks to uh, the, the Wilkins family, the whole family, uh, for all y'all's ministry over the years and leading Royal Rangers and Missionettes and everything. And, and, uh, and Robin, Robin ran our office for years. Robin Malden, James was on our praise team. Thank you guys so much. And if you were ever in a, any kind of ministry or leadership role here in the past at Grace Fellowship Church, would you just stand up real quick? Just want, I want Some of you already stood. Just stand again. It's all right. Thank you. Thank you. Look at these guys. Hey, got the Andrews, Paul and Nancy. We're over our prayer ministry. Charles, Amy, uh, Rashonda, the Daytons with our youth pastors. I mentioned the Wilkins. Terry Gibson helped out with the Royal Rangers. The Beans led our children's ministry for years and were on our leadership team. Our daughter Kristen was over our Mother's Day out for years. Uh, uh, Mary Faulkner is over our missions program for years. Pastor Damien and Marion, thank you so much for being here today. Such an important part of our church and their teaching. He was an elder here, and she ran our Mother's Day out. You guys were such an important part of our lives. Thank you, guys. I don't know if I missed somebody, but I just want to thank you all for being here. We couldn't have done it without you. Good morning, Grace. At this time, can I please have our pastors, our GFC staff, and ministers please stand? I know you're kind of all around here, and if you're on stage, if you would come forward just a little bit. We have pressed through some challenging times together, but you know what? That's what makes the joyful moments that much sweeter. Your relationships have grown stronger, 
and you truly are selfless as you work together for the kingdom. Now I'd like to speak 1 Corinthians 15, 58 over you. My beloved, you are steadfast, you are immovable, you are always abounding in the work of the Lord. Know this, that in the Lord your labor is not in vain. As we press forward, I, press, I pray blessings for you and your family. I pray a fresh anointing to be upon you. I pray new seeds are planted in your ministries, and I look forward to the fruit that comes from your faithfulness. Sorry. Each one of you are so special, and I love you so much. <laughs> but it's an honor and a privilege to serve with each and one of you. I honor you today. Thank you so much. Now, each one of these teams, ministry leaders, has a team of people that work and minister with them. So if you volunteer, will you please stand as well? Please stand. I know what some of them are in there. Thank you so much. Thank you for being the hands and feet of Jesus. Thank you for partnering with us as we touch heaven and change earth. We could not do this without you. God bless you. Thank you so much. We honor you as well today. Thank you, Mary. Mary is our executive pastor, director of operations, all that. She runs the show here, so I appreciate her. I saw Waylon and Jeanette down here and their family. Thank you guys for being here today. We love you all. They were an important part of our church and praise and worship and prophetic ministry and teaching. And I'm sure I missed somebody. Please forgive me. It's hard to see up here, but thank you for being here. And thank you to our staff. And uh, especially Pastor Carrie Lowry today uh, for uh, all that, that she did to make this happen, and, and Mary and the rest of our staff, uh, Josefina and Sonia and all you guys, thank you so much. We love you so much. Uh, you know, to get anywhere, you got to have vision, and vision tells where you're going. And, and since the beginning, we've had this vision of touching heaven, changing earth. In fact, that banner over there that's up is that old, old logo. <laughs> I think it was about our second logo. I think Lisa designed the first logo we ever had, and then this was our second one. And uh, uh, thankfully, we moved on from there. But we, uh, our vision has, that part of our vision has stayed the same, to worship God and, and to be in his presence and to extend his kingdom in the world. Worship and missions were a big part of us from the beginning, which we got from, from Pastor Holden and Sybil, uh, our, our pastors and our spiritual parents. And, and um, later, God gave us this vision to be multi-ethnic, and so we changed our vision to be a, to be a spirit-filled, multi-ethnic church that touches heaven and changes earth. And as part of that, Pastor Wilda, if you would come up real quick, that I see, I thought I see, uh, uh, we, we, we always had this vision to have all ethnicities in one service, but a few years ago, we noticed some, uh, we noticed Hispanic people attending who did not speak English, and so they, they didn't stay very long because they didn't understand somebody would have to interp interpret for them. So, so God kind of gave us this vision to start a, a Hispanic service called Grace Latino, and we have an awesome pastor there, Pastora Wilda Gonzalez Bab. You want to say a few words? Thank you, Pastor. Blessing to all of you. And Grace Latino is about people and families. We are sharing the gospel in Spanish, and our goal is to develop a culture of, dis of discipleship in the Grace Latino congregation in our people. This is the way believers grow spiritually and emotionally in their relationship with God in order to serve him and others in their daily life. So this is our goal at Grace Latino as part of Grace Fellowship Church. So thank you, Grace Fellowship Church, Grace Latino, for being part of this great effort, and in particular, uh, Lynn and Ron Dennis, uh, to, for being part of this great effort with me. Thank you, Grace Fellowship Church, for this opportunity to serve God and our Latino communities. We are touching heavens and changing earth. God bless you. Thank you. How do you say that in Spanish, touching heaven, changing earth? Tocando el cielo, transformando la tierra. That's what I thought. I was just checking to make sure you knew. <laughs> hey, and uh, to accomplish our vision, we do four things. We experience God's presence, we equip God's people, we extend his kingdom, and we empower the next generation. 
And th- I want you to know for our future, our future vision going forward, and we feel as strongly about this as we did when we went multi-ethnic, is really having a, a, an outreach to multi to generations, especially the younger generation. Uh, all churches are struggling with this across America to reach and keep the younger uh, generations. So the apostolic team has identified three areas in which we need to focus. We're very excited about this. We've prayed over this. We've sought God over this. The three areas are making disciples, strengthening marriages and families, and empowering the next generation of leaders. And we feel with that vision, we're going to move forward in faith. So we came up with this vision for 2021. We will become a multi-generational church that makes disciples, strengthens families, and empowers the next generation of leaders. And we are so excited about what God is going to do as we continue to trust him to touch heaven and then all of us change earth. We're so excited today to have our pastor here. He's been our pastor since uh, 1979, Pastor Olin Sybil. Some of y'all were from Shady Grove, and he, uh, they were pastors there for many, many, many years. And he is now an apostolic elder at Gateway Church uh, with Pastor Robert Morris, who also came from, from uh, Shady Grove Church. And I know a lot of Shady Grovers are here watching online. But these guys have had so much influence on us. They're like spiritual parents to us, counselors, mentors. The ones we call when we need help, when we're crying and we call somebody, it's usually them. And they've spent countless hours with us. We've gone to Israel with them. We've gone to Africa with them. Um, They've they've poured into us and people all around the world. And we're just so grateful for them. So would you give us a great big welcome today to uh, Pastor Olin Griffin. Love you too. So honored to have you here. Thank you. Well, it's been 42 years since we first met. That's true. That's true. And it's been a good 42 years. Yeah. We too, Sybil and I were just bumping each other and whispering a little bit. We want to bring honor to you as pastors who stuck with it. I've never known anyone that has stuck to something. They're, they're not quitters. They'll get through it. They don't give up. They keep on. No matter what happens, they'll keep on and stay with the vision that God has given them. I just love them so much, Sybil and I do, and, and I know you do as well, and, and there is no one that I know, honestly, I'm telling the truth, that is a better teacher Amen. than Pastor Joe. Amen. He is, I'm, I'm telling you, I, and I'm not, I'm not just saying that, Joe, we've got a lot of preachers and a lot of, a lot of teachers that I've heard through the years, but you, you are absolutely a pastor, teacher of excellence. Yes. And I uh, just honored the two of you, and, and you've stuck it out. Here you are, and we love you so very, very, very much. Um, what, I'm, I'm, really, I'm really glad to hear this, this emphasis on touching heaven, and, uh, and touching heaven is, I also see it as, as worship, has a big part of that. That has been my heart for the years that the presence of the Lord would would be in our in our midst. And that's what I'm wanting to share on today. It may may look sort of um, different. Psalms 87 if you have your Bibles. I'm going to speak on the whole Psalms. It's only 7 verses, don't fear. <laughs> <laughs> It's a, it's, it's really, only, it's literally only, only seven verses, and, um, and it, it has to, it has to do with the presence of God. And oftentimes we look over that and, and worship and the manifest presence of the Lord in, in our midst. Um, before I begin to read it, here, here is basically uh, my burden. There was a person at Shady Grove. 
that I noticed, and this was in our younger years, and, and um, I noticed that everyone would stand, and they, they, you could tell they, like they were into worship and just worshiping God with all their heart. <clears throat> this one person that I was, I was looking at um, would just stand there. And, but he, he, loved, he loved the church and he had been there for a couple of years at that time. And so I one day went to lunch with him and I said, you know, um, uh, are you okay with worship people being um, a, a little visible in the way they lift their hands and shout and sing? And Are you, you, are you okay with that? I noticed that whenever we worship, you just stand there. He said to me, oh, pastor, no, it's nothing. I'm, I can't help it. I'm of English descent. And, you know, we, we, we're, we're not really emotional people, and um, we just have a stiff, stiff lip. You know, the, the British stiff lip. And um, I said, oh, well, that, that helps me understand, understand you a whole lot better. Um, so after about... Two months after that, um, we went to a football game together, a <laughs> Dallas football game. <clears throat> and uh, we really wanted the Cowboys to win, but the Cowboys were behind. It was one of those last-minute drives. You know, the Cowboys are good, particularly this season, very good with that. Being behind and at the last minute inter intercepting a pass and make going like that. So here we were. The, we, were we were out. I mean, we, there was no way. We couldn't, we couldn't kick field goal. It had, to be, it had to be a touchdown. And so I remember the quarterback went back with just a few seconds left. And one of, one of those big Hail Mary passes, it, it looked like it was over 50 yards. And the guy runs under it and catches it in, in the last, in the last uh, few minutes, seconds of the game. And the crowds went crazy. And I looked around, and this guy was jumping up. He's going, we won, we won, we won. I, I, can you believe that? We won. And everyone in the, in the, in the group was set, hollering that. And I, at that moment, I said, I, this, I think it was the Holy Spirit, said, just sit here. <laughs> he looked around at me in a moment, and I remember what side of the stadium we were on, on the old Cowboy Stadium. And, uh, and he looked at me and he said, is everything okay? Pastors, everything okay? I said, oh, it's really okay. He, he, you don't enjoy football? I, I enjoy football. I really enjoy football. Well, but what, but you, I mean, we just, you, uh, you saw this? And, it, and I said, oh, yes. I'm from English descent. <laughs> You know, we're not moved emotionally very, very much. We sort of approach things with a stiff lip. He looked at me and he said, I got you, Pastor. I got you. I, I know what you're saying. And from that day on, whenever we stood up, and he would just be, he'd be right with us, raising his hands and singing and carrying on. Because it, it's really, it's really sort of, what, what, do, what, do, we, what do we really value? Where, where's, where is our heart? And, and um, you know, when Jesus was talking about his presence, he said, where two or three are gathered together in, in my name, there I am in their midst. Well, you know, there's a, there's a, there's a manifest presence of God. And uh, then, then there's the presence of God that is all over the world, the omnipresence of the Lord. And so we, we think, well, oh yeah, well, well, God's here. Yeah, it's like, hey, he's walking with me at work. He is. He honestly is. But, but Jesus said, there I am in your midst. And, and he, Jesus knew 
that, that he, he was omnipresent, that the Lord was omnipresent, that God is omnipresent, that he is everywhere. But when he says, I am surely in your meeting, I'm in your meeting, I am there in your meeting, yeah. Yeah. That, that we can say, what? Dear Lord, if he walked in the door right now in body, we would say we'd probably pass out, but there would be a bunch of us say, Hallelujah, here he is right now in, in the midst of the church. And so I, I, I'm, I'm saying, if, if we believe that when we come together in the Lord, that his presence is there, right? Then, we, the, oh, wait, wait, yeah, yeah, hi, Jesus. Yeah, no, 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 no. I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, to, no, I'm not going to be stiff-lipped. I'm not going to be of a, another descent. I'm of the descent of Jesus Christ and the Word of God, and I'm, 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 I'm going for it. So um, in Psalms 87, and I'm going to start with verse 7. Um, yeah, I, I, didn't, I didn't say that, but I'm going to start with verse 7, and let, let him, I'm going to read it. And I'm starting there for a reason. He says in verse 7 of chapter 87 of Psalms, both the singers and the players on instruments say, all my springs are in you. So we say, what is, what is it that would, would cause us to really worship God in presence, in the presence, and see God begin to touch people and do things, release missions and everything else? So we, what, what, what does it mean here? These, these people are pretty excited. They got their instruments out, and they're, they're, they're apparently they're moving around, all, and they're, they're saying, both the singers and the players on instruments, they say, all my springs are in you. And, and when, I, when, I, when I looked up this word, it's not the same word for, for a, a, a river or a creek. It's not the same word for a well or a cistern. It, it, it is a spring. It is a spring. All of my springs are in you. A spring is something that comes from a, a, a water aquifer under the ground. It, it's hard to describe that, but it, it's, there, you don't dig at it. You don't drop a bucket in it. You don't, a spring gushes. And, and, and he was telling that. To the, you remember the, the woman by the well? And he said, I, I, I've got a living water. He, that's, he, it's a, he used the word spring there. It's the same thing. God has a gushing spring for us. Yes. And, and we, we don't have to dig at it. We don't have to run the, the bucket down to the bottom and pull, pull it up. In fact, there was a guy, and in, in, I was a state trooper for 10 years. And there was a, when I was a state trooper, this guy, people would invite you to do special little things. And um, he invited me out to his ranch, huge ranch, show me where we could go fishing if we wanted to. Of course, oftentimes I didn't accept that because I had to stop him on the road for speeding. Uh, I was going to give him a ticket anyway, and I didn't know if he would appreciate that. And maybe he was trying to get me to, you know, what I'm talking about. <laughs> anyway, anyway, he said, yeah, you know, this, I, I was talking about the land. He said, this is great. I, I told him, this is great property here. Um, all these acres. He said, man, it, it's dry now. And it was dry when I bought it and I bought it for ranching. But you know, a record show at the courthouse, a record show that there were five springs on this property. There was at one time, there were five springs. He said, I checked it out at, at the courthouse. And, and I said, what happened? He said, well, the, the federal man came out and looked at the land. And, and he said, the reason you don't have springs is because of all of these mesquite trees. Big mesquite trees. Some of them take 50 gallons of water a day in the summer. Some of them more than that to 100 gallons of water. And those mesquite trees who, what, that wasn't there in the past that was brought in from some other country that was brought in. And, and all of these mesquite trees came up, roots went down, they started sucking from the aquifer, and they didn't have the water. And, and, and that, that is what we're talking about. When we have a, a, an aquifer, we have a supply 
of the Holy Ghost and of Jesus Christ and God the Father and other believers all, all around, we have that and, and we are not growing any mesquite trees in this, in this house or in the body of Christ. We're, we have that aquifer. It is flowing right now. And he said, all of my springs are in you. But who is he talking about in you? Look at the very first verse of, the, of, that, of that chapter. He says in the first verse of 87, His foundation is in the holy mountains. The Lord loves the gates of Zion more than all the dwellings of Jacob. Glorious things are spoken of you. His foundation is in the mountain. Who is he talking about? He's talking about God. That his foundation. What, what is, well, he doesn't need a foundation. What does that mean? In the Hebrew, it means that he has used that for a foundational place in the earth. It, it, it is a headquarters found, type of foundation. It is, it is, it is there that I, reserve, I, I have reserved for myself. Mount Zion, will, as we'll see, Mount Zion, and I'm, I'm moving through this quickly as I can. Mount Zion um, uh, is, is the name for Jerusalem. Mount Zion and Jerusalem would be the same, the same location. So here on this place was, was Mount Zion, which was where the manifest presence of God was. For example... It, it, you, can, you can look at Abraham and Isaac. Where did Abraham and Isaac go for Abraham to sacrifice his son? Mount Zion. This was way centuries before they had a town there, a city there. But Mount Zion was there. I mean, it, it was, it was the, the central place of God. That's where the tabernacle of Moses was established. I mean, the, I mean it was set up. Tabernacle of Moses moved from moved from out just outside of Egypt, moved all the way to Israel, and whenever it was reset, it was there on Mount Zion. It, it, the Tabernacle of David, the Ark of the Covenant, it was brought there. The temple was set up there. It is like Mount Zion is, is God's headquarters on the earth. It is His mountain of all the mountains, and I, I don't own, it, it make anyone. I feel a little wounded with this, but I'm telling you of all of the mountains in the world, God chose that mountain to be his earthly headquarters, and that's where things be happened, and that's where things came out of, spiritual things came out of that. And they had been there, this, this group had been there, they came out singing, where, where had they been? They had been in the manifest presence of God, not just, just the presence like I was talking about earlier but in the manifest presence of God. And by the way, if you don't mind, let me stop and go back to that. I believe that's one of the, that's one of the, how am I going to say that? That is the issue that needs to be dealt with for the church to be the church. And as long as we have a church, that's churches that are full of people, who come on Sunday, well, I've got to get dressed, I've got to go to church, I've got to give my tithe, I've got to get this, I've got to get that, and they, they go and sit there like a bunch of mummies. And, they, and, and also, it, I mean, it, there's, there, is no, there, is no, there is no sense of, I mean, I'd like to say, Jesus is in your midst. I mean, he is really in your midst. Come on. If you, if, if, you, if you understand what I'm saying, I believe the church has got to have a revolution. And I believe that you, pastors, are on target. This is what God is doing in the earth today. And there is going to be a revival of the manifest presence of God where people can go to church and they get healed. You don't have to have a healer. You, I believe in healing and in, in people having faith in healing. But I, I believe there is a way that we can come and worship God. And the presence of God is so, is so strong that God begins to speak to people's hearts. I know a man that's serving right this very moment. 
he, he, he retired from his job and he went back to India. And he's doing a tremendous job in India right now. I mean a tremendous job. Not some little work. A tremendous work. Do you know where, when he got that? He was at, at Shady Grove Church one morning in a worship service. And the presence of God was so strong. God spoke to his heart and said, I want you to go back to India Just as soon as you retire from your work, get back into India. He started before he retired from his work. And they've got Bible college and reaching out in communities and in villages and all over India. One thing started, he was in worship. Oh, hey, hey, that's all right. I got it. I I still got some balance. I didn't see the difference there. Okay, I was going to walk that right out on you. In fact, I still will. Look, look. (laughs) <laughs> um, here's, the, here's the thing I can write could write a book about people who were changed when they were worshiping God in spirit and in truth yes. Yes. and that's what I'm saying today they were, they were excited. They were going to like this. Oh, it, they and the presence of God. You know, they were tooting their horns and they were worshiping God. And he's saying, you know where it came from? It came from the presence of God. The middle verses says this. This is Zion. And he said, uh, Zion, Zion is a place where people are born into Zion. I am pretty convinced that most people who get saved, they pray the prayer of salvation. They are born again. I believe in the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And there's a baptism of the Holy Spirit. But when it comes to worship, it's like you have to be born into worship, into the presence of God. You have to be born into it where you walk night and day sensing His presence. And when you go to church, you just carry that sense of, yes, I understand and I'm going to walk in and have a worship time. And we all come together. And then when the Holy Spirit falls, somebody over here gets healed. A marriage over here gets delivered. You, you understand what I'm saying? That, that, that's it. And, and I, I believe in those special ministries, but I also believe that when we begin to worship and we've been birthed into it, into, into love, into gratitude, and we can come to the church with gratitude. I mean, hallelujah. And, and not just come to church with gratitude. Wake up every morning with gratitude. Walk with gratitude. Eat with gratitude. Gratitude. Gratitude to God. Gratitude to other people. I believe gratitude is one of the biggest things that we need to be developed in the church today. That we, we're, we're grateful for every person. Grateful like for everyone that has been here. So I'm just crying out to you. If you've not been touched, I remember the time I was touched. Hallelujah. About worship. And if you've not been touched in, with personal worship, getting up in the mornings and singing. My wife doesn't like that too well, but <laughs> getting up in the morning singing, the voice is not the best in the world, you know, but. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. If you need a change in your heart concerning your personal worship, your personal gratitude toward the Lord, if you need to feel something, you believe the Holy Spirit needs to do a deeper work in you concerning that, we invite you, I invite you right now just to listen to his voice. And say, Lord, I, I, don't, I don't sense that. But I want to be aware of you all day long. I want to be aware of you when I sleep and when I wake up. 
we're going to sing a, sing a song. And um, I would like for you to, during this song, begin to consider, do I need to be born again, again? That's what I call it. <laughs> born again, again, into worship, into the presence of God. And if you need that, as we sing this song, you're invited to sing. All of us are invited to sing. But as we sing this song, if you'd want to stop singing for a while and just say, Lord, I want, it, I want that. It says some were born in Egypt and some in other countries, but it's named that they were born into Zion. Born into it. So could we stand together? Just let the Holy Spirit begin to speak to you. If you need to sit, don't feel badly about, about sitting. And we'll worship with this song. And you may have some other way. If someone wants to come down, Pastor, if someone wants to come down and pray with people, okay, it's, it would be up to you. The prayer team would be up. Thank you.
we gave the invitation for those that want to receive Jesus Christ. I love that word. It made me think about the story that when the people understood that the Pharisees, that they practiced righteousness externally and they, they focused more on the outward appearances than what was on the inside. And among the crowd, the people began to speak and they said, teacher, rebuke them, uh, these followers for saying things like that. And he replied that if, if they kept quiet, that the rocks, the stones along the roadside would burst in the cheers. And I don't know who could receive that, but as they were singing that, it made me think of this scripture as we close. It says, when I can, when, when can I go from your spirit or where can I flee from your presence? If I ascend to heaven, you are there. If I make my bed and she hold, behold, you are there. If I take the wings of the dawn, if I dwell in the remotest part of the sea, even there your hand will lead me and your right hand will lay hold of me. Somebody shout hallelujah. We're going to leave this place, but never from his presence. We want to continue to celebrate not just 20 years past, present, but also what God is going to do in the future of grace, but also in the future of your life. I don't know about you, but you should be seeing some things, some different levels of things that God is calling you to. So as we go forward in faith, we want you to go forward in faith in your own life and with your family. So when you leave this place, high five someone, fist bump them. We have some cookies and refreshments on the outside. We're going to allow our pastors to be able to exit so they can see your lovely faces for those of you who came to visit today and thank you again for celebrating with us somebody just give a hallelujah praise in this place all my life we love you guys you're dismissed